646 is the time if you maybe have a birthday party coming up and you're looking for, you know, balloons for that special occasion. You may notice a problem. There is not a lot of helium to go around right now. And it's been described as a nationwide shortage, but it doesn't just affect how festive your party is. Chris Davis joins us now to explain Aww. what is going on with the helium. Yeah, and it does actually affect how festive your party is. That is an important <laughs> factor here because this is mostly the property of helium that we know, right? It's lighter than air. It floats. But the, there are a lot of other properties about helium that make it useful for research and in medical devices. So where is all the helium? One down, 119 to go. That's just one day, one job. Brett Nelson has done a lot of them like this in nine years. You can imagine he goes through a lot of helium, a couple tanks a week. During the busier times of years, I can easily go through three or four. If he can find them. That's been a struggle the last few weeks. The challenge when a shortage comes up is that we did not get much notice. We go through probably two tanks of helium a month. UT geology researchers say they've had to wait a month or two for a restock recently, as opposed to just a few days. They use it to get better x-rays of core samples. And here's an example of one of the samples that you can see here. That helps companies reduce the environmental impact of oil and gas drilling. But helium is mostly used for cooling. So helium can cool to minus 450 degrees, which is the coldest uh, of any of the elements. MRIs, semiconductors, rocket engine testing, it all uses the gas. It is hard to imagine a world without birthday balloons. Brett's not sure when the shortage will end or when prices will drop again. He's paying 20% more than he usually does. It's left us constantly guessing. He doesn't want to leave customers deflated. Good now, one. Brett, yeah, I, I had to get one, <laughs> one in there at least. Brett and the researchers both tell me they've seen these shortages before. This time, it appears to be a combination of <laughs> factors, including sanctions on foreign, he, this was a bad idea, <laughs> sanctions no, on he foreign me. helium suppliers, <laughs> lower output from U.S. companies, and prioritizing where the available helium goes. Medical and military of uses, of course, come first before the party balloons. All right, so I think a lot of people think, well, you can blow up balloons, you know, you don't sure. have to have helium, but why is it so, uh, there isn't anything else that researchers can maybe use? Well, or? so there are other elements, something like hydrogen is also very light, which is mm -hmm. one of the properties of helium that these researchers like, but helium is inert, which means it doesn't react with other chemicals, which makes it ideal for some of these research purposes. Yeah. Also something like hydrogen is explosive, uh, that can get dangerous mm. in lab settings. Who knew that this shortage could affect so many people besides crying kids? Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's a much bigger deal than, than just your party. It is, yeah. and they make me so happy, balloons. All right, Chris, thank you for that story. Uh, Chris was also talking about how he did some research on this, and the research um, that he talked about is um, because the helium auction out of Amarillo over the summer may be one of the reasons behind the shortage. Amarillo, you're thinking? Yes, the federal government operates and maintains a helium storage reservoir. Did you know a plant and a pipeline system over to Amarillo? At one point, the city of Amarillo was dubbed the helium capital of America.